A pastor told this story that during the early years of his ministry, a lady gave her life to Christ during one of their church services. And as time progressed, she began to come more and more to church. There was one specific area in her life which was troubling her, and that was she never ever felt safe in her home. She always felt an uneasy feeling in her house, and this feeling would intensify at night. The lady told the pastor that every night she would hear footsteps walking in her home, although she lived alone. At points, she even went out of her bedroom and searched her house, looking for the source of the noise, but every time she went looking for the noise, it would stop and start in another room, and she would go to that room and it would stop and start in another room. The lady spoke about how she would wake up in the middle of the night and would see a black figure standing in her bedroom. Just as clear as day, she would see this figure time and time again in her room. And this happened to this lady even before she gave her life to Christ, and it continued after she gave her life to Christ. She prayed and prayed and cried and prayed. But night after night she heard footsteps in her home and kept seeing this figure. She even moved houses, thinking that was the solution, but her first night in the new home she heard the footsteps again. And that black figure appeared and disappeared in her room again. She sought counselling about this issue, because to her it had got to the point where she was scared to be in her own home. During a counselling session, the pastor was praying for her and the Lord revealed to him what the source of her trouble was. She had an occult book that had a little statue of an idol on it in her home that she wasn't even aware of. The pastor instructed her to go home and remove that book from her house, and she did just that. And that night at two o'clock in the morning, she literally heard a stampede in her house as if the evil spirits were running, leaving her home. After this, she never had any other issues in her home. Her home was a home of peace and security. You might say the devil had no right to be in her home. She was Christian. But she had brought something into her home that opened the door for the devil and his demons to operate in her house. She did all of this unknowingly. You may say that's not fair, but the truth is the devil doesn't play fair. He doesn't play by the rules. You should pray and ask God to review anything that is not of his. There are a lot of things that we do and write off as being insignificant, but affect our lives in ways that we might be totally unaware of. Sometimes we confess things unknowingly or deliberately without knowing their effects and implications in our lives. Curses and blessings are often caused by the word of our mouth, but they can be transferred by physical objects. There is more to this world than meets the eye. We live in a physical world that is controlled by the spiritual. There are powers and principalities that scramble for the partition of this world and want to occupy a space in human lives. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, that we war with rulers and princes of this world who live in high places. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Objects in the home have significance. Objects in the home have symbolic significance and representations that transcend aesthetics and beauty purposes. Objects that we bring in our homes might have curves and attract spirits. Sometimes all the devil needs to pitch his tent in our home is one image or one item that represents his identity. 
As long as this object remains in the four walls of our home, he won't stop coming to identify with what is his. This is the reason we have to make the Holy Spirit the head of our home. The Spirit of God is profitable for everything that concerns our life and living. He will lead us and guide us on what is God's and what represents the devil. For instance, the dragon represents the devil. Keeping engraved images of such an animal in our home or wearing them around our neck isn't appropriate for us as children of God. There are so many Satan-inspired fashion inspirations and trends that we have embraced and emulated as children of God these days. Sadly, not every fashion trend is meant for believers. Being fashionable is great. A good dress sense is admirable. But not all fashion trends are for Christians. They might not necessarily be harmful. But Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians that all things are lawful but not expedient. Because it is permissible does not make it totally unharmful. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12 says, All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Different images that are known to belong to different occult groups aren't supposed to be found in the home of believers. Apart from the fact that it doesn't symbolize the glory of God or betray the faith we confess, it might also bring in things that we don't desire into our homes. They might not have apparent adverse effects, but they affect our daily living and interactions with others. Take heed of the warning given to God's chosen people in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 25 through 26, which says, You shall burn the carved images of their gods with fire. You shall not covet the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it for yourselves, lest you be snared by it. For it is an abomination to the Lord your God. Nor shall you bring an abomination into your house, lest you be doomed to destruction like it. You shall utterly detest it and utterly abhor it, for it is an accursed thing. The dark energy the devil casts is creepy and subtle. He makes attempts to target and weaken our defenses, puts us in a vulnerable place before he attacks. We need to fire ourselves up and take away whatever attracts him in our home and life. Whether or not we know if we have the devil's possession in our home, here's what we should do. Spiritual tips on how to cleanse a house. We love to give our physical space a facelift from time to time, whether it is surface cleaning, deep cleaning, or just routine cleaning that keeps our environment in a pristine condition, we like to have a clean environment. But do we ever worry about spiritual cleansing, decluttering our space, and removing all the veils of darkness and the devil? The Bible tells us that where there is no knowledge, the people will perish. If we don't get to the root of whatever we might be passing through, then we are bound to continue to languish and wallow in it and suffer in ignorance. To enjoy a breath of spiritual freedom in God's presence, here are helpful tips. Allow the Spirit of God in your home. The Spirit of God is the Spirit of truth and God's presence. He can't share the same space with darkness. Darkness vanishes at the glimpse of light. Once we allow the Spirit of truth to rule and reign in our home, we will enjoy peace and tranquility. Even if there is anything we bring in that oozes negativity and suppresses the light, God's Spirit will expose it and it will be taken away completely. Put on wholesome and spirit-filled songs. Music is therapeutic and has immense healing powers. Spirit-filled songs invoke the Spirit of God and chase every spirit contrary to his. When King Saul was tormented by unclean spirits, David would play instruments and songs and the spirits would depart from him. We can play songs that set our home ablaze with the fire of God and make it an unfit abode for any dark spirit or agent of the devil. We must be careful to not play music that would allow the devil to enter our home. Do not just sing songs absent-mindedly. Think about the words. What are they really saying? Words have power. Do not unknowingly speak darkness into your home. This also goes for TV programs and movies. Declutter. Just as we like to declutter our space and bring out items and materials that are no longer of use to us, we should also declutter our spiritual space. We should go from room to room, taking out everything that might be mirroring the devil to us. We should take them and burn them to ashes. 
After this, we can pray strategically and dedicate the four walls of our home to God. Anoint your home. Ask for God's angels to stand guard around your house, at every window and every door. Psalm 91 verse 11 says, For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. We must heed the words of Joshua in Joshua chapter 24 verse 19 where he says, But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. Like him, you must declare that in your household. You will only serve the Lord and obey his voice. Live a holy life. Nothing beats living a holy life. Sometimes the object of attraction that the devil sees in our home is our heart. He sees the void in our heart, decides to occupy it, and begin to reign supreme. A life of holiness makes us live above the ploys or gimmicks of the devil. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 says, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us clean ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. And James chapter 4, verses 7 through 8 says, Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Houses have spirits. Do houses and buildings have spirits? Oh yes they do. Not just homes, not just buildings, but also objects and personal items. Just as a human person can house a spirit, so can objects and buildings. As Christians, we can be sure of the existence of Satan and demons because the Bible plainly depicts them as fallen angels who work in the world to oppose God and his people and deceive and blind unbelievers to the truth of the gospel. In essence, demons can be described as persons without bodies. They exhibit characteristics of a person. A perfect example of this is seen in Luke 11, verse 24 to 26. Jesus is speaking on the topic of unclean spirits here, and he states, When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places, seeking rest, and finding none. He says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. I want you to notice of something in the passage of scripture that we just read. The unclean spirit that is being spoken of here is depicted to have a personality. Notice what the Spirit said. I will return to my house from which I came. That is evidence of a personality making its own decisions. It is very important that you understand that you are dealing with a person. Early on in my ministry, a man came to me for deliverance. He was very young in the faith and told me about his experience with stealing. He had given his life to Christ now, but he had lived a significant portion of his life as a criminal, and since he came to Christ, he gave up partying no problem. He used to live for every party, but he gave that up. He gave up drinking and smoking no problem. But what he couldn't give up was stealing. He would tell me that he would not be able to resist the urge to steal. Any time an opportunity presented itself to steal, he would steal. And he wouldn't want to do it, but he would find himself having an internal dialogue with himself and he would end up stealing. 
and he kept on blaming himself about this and he prayed and he fasted he read the scriptures he quote unquote tried to crucify the flesh and the more he prayed and he fasted the more opportunities to steal that came and the more he stole I told him that he needed deliverance from a demon spirit. I came to this conclusion because of the way he described his ordeal. The way he was compelled, harassed and enticed to steal were all characteristics and behaviors of demon spirits. I told him that the Bible has the remedy for his situation. This came as a relief to him because he had been blaming himself for always being compelled and enticed to steal. He now knew that he had been dealing with a person, a personality, a demon spirit that he could get rid of. He now knew that the internal dialogue he would have with himself before he stole wasn't actually with himself, but another person. You see, the man didn't know what demons can do, so he thought he was dealing with the flesh, the old, carnal nature that we all have inherited from Adam, when he actually was dealing with a person, a demon spirit. He was dealing with the spirit of stealing, but he was trying to deal with it as if it was the flesh. He was trying to crucify the demon spirit, but you can't crucify a demon. It needs to be cast out. You can, however, crucify the old nature in us. The Adamic nature can be crucified. This is why it is important to know whether you are dealing with an evil spirit or whether you are dealing with your flesh. So, we as the body of Christ need to know whether we are dealing with the flesh or whether we are dealing with the demon. So now let me highlight signs that show you and highlight to you that you are dealing with a demon. One of the things they come to do is to entice. We all at one stage or another in our lives have been enticed to do evil. You find someone's food on the table and you know it's not yours, but something whispered to you that you should eat it. That's a demon enticing you. Anything that comes to you in words comes from a person. So, you know that enticement comes from a person, a demon. Many things that people don't perceive as being a big deal are sponsored by the demons. These demons know that if they entice you and you fall for it, it will push you to commit other sins. What they do is entice you and wait for you to take the bait. When you see that something is getting your attention unnecessarily, you need to examine it. You need to look into it with great caution, just to know if it is right. You might be doing something online and an ungodly advert pops up on your screen, and an internal dialogue begins and a demon has found an opportunity to entice you. Being enticed or being tempted does not mean you are demon-possessed or you have committed a sin. Jesus was tempted in the wilderness and he overcame the temptation with the word of God. And we all know that Jesus lived a perfect, sinless life. Being enticed and tempted is not wrong. This is something you and I cannot escape, but yielding to that temptation is where the problem starts. When you give in to it, that is when you have made a grave mistake. The next sign is that they compel. They make people do things they don't really want to do. After enticing a person and that person is appearing to not be yielding, they pressure the person into doing it. They make a person think of all the possible ways that this evil act or thing will benefit you. They try to blind a person from the negative side 
and they make a person see the reasons why they should do it. This is why you see some people committing sexual immorality, even though they are married, committing acts of adultery even though they have a perfectly good spouse at home. They are blinded to all the negative effects of sexual immorality, the devastation effects on the family, the broken covenant with God, the broken trust, the destruction of a marriage. They are blind by the evil spirit and they are only compelled to focus on the immediate satisfaction. The third sign is that they harass. When you see people commit any unthinkable acts, heinous acts, and when they calm down or when they get caught, they say something along the lines of, I don't know what got into me. That is the most common statement that people make, and we think they are just saying this to avoid being blamed. And in all honesty, they are telling the truth. The truth is that some wicked things that people do are a result of the demons that have been looking for the perfect time to act and consume a person. They harass people, attacking them and causing them to do things they don't want to do. Let me give you an example. A businessman who goes to work and has a horrible day, people make complaints about him to his manager at work. His manager unjustly gives him a hard time at work and then he forces him to work overtime. And he gets an unexpected bill and then he finally gets home and his wife says something to him that he doesn't like. The kids are running everywhere and then he begins to shout and scream and throwing things on the floor, destroying the house. And that demon of anger which has been following him all day sees its opportunity and slips in. And something comes over him and his wife looks at him and sees something in his eyes she never saw before. And then some time passes and he is repent. And he says that phrase we said earlier, I don't know what got into me. And he is telling the truth, he does not. But we know what got into him. And that was the demon of anger and it harassed him all day until it got its opportunity when he had the moment of weakness. The fourth sign is that they torment. This is one of the top things they do to humans. They torment at every level. Any way they can torment, they will. They torment emotionally, they torment financially, they torment in marriages, they torment academically, they torment in every area of life if they can. They torment emotionally with overthinking. For instance, every situation a person is in, that person always thinks the worst is going to happen. The person feels a pain on their knee and the person starts overthinking. Is it this illness? Is it that illness? When it is a pain from when she banged her knees two days ago, every situation is the end of the world. They torment with fear. A person lives their life with no peace, just constantly in fear. They torment spiritually. A person begins to pray to God and then demons whisper to him, you think God will listen to a sinner like you? Are you forgetting what you did last night? Are you forgetting what you did last week? Or they torment a person spiritually by telling them they are not forgiven even though the person has earnestly repented of their sins. They torment physically so people in their homes experience supernatural events. They hear footsteps when no one is there furniture being moved around. And the final sign is that they deceive. We should always know about this. They do all the time and when they do this, they use the Bible. Don't be surprised, they can quote the Bible just like you can and they will use words in the Bible to deceive you into doing something. 
Demons are manipulative. They deceive you into doing wrong things. The devil himself tried to deceive Jesus using the word of God. Jesus overcame. You will overcome it too in Jesus' name. These are not all the signs that tell you if you are dealing with the demon. It is important we know these things so we can use the correct remedy to deal with our problem. Hosea 4 verse 6 My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. If you have Jesus as your Lord, your rock and your Savior, there is no way demons will overcome you. The power of Christ is enough to deal with them in your life. You must pray against them at all times. Don't wait until you start seeing some kind of image walking in your house before you feel there is a demon around you. They don't operate that way. They attack you in a way you will not notice. Stick to Jesus and you will overcome.